Hello traders, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Today is Sunday, it is March 3rd. It is at noon, 12.06 p.m. Eastern Time, and this is the weekly outlook for the futures indices. And uh, we're gonna revisit some commodities today. We're gonna go through uh, gold, oil, and uh, we're gonna go through natural gas, copper, uh, heating oil, RBOB, and uh, we're also gonna do bonds today. So uh, let's begin, NASDAQ. And uh, this is the monthly chart of NASDAQ. Obviously Friday was March 1st. We have a brand new candle that is uh, just working on a continuation higher from the prior month. So we still have room for a move higher all the way into the 72.35 for the monthly, uh, on the monthly basis. This is monthly resistance at the 72.35. If we break above this area and any consolidation and any pullback buy that is actually developing on uh, smaller time frames, one hour, even 15 minute, or even daily, uh, is uh, promoting a continuation higher. Now, this is gonna be the first obstacle. We have a prior, uh, prior high from March of last year, and we also have this high that was uh, generated last November. If we break over this 7,200 high, we still have a really impressive tradable void into last year's high, November's high of 77.28. And let's move down one time frame to the weekly chart. And I just wanted to say, guys, this is impressive. 10 weeks in a row. And did you know that NASDAQ 100 is up 10, has been up 10 weeks in a row? And this is one of the longest runs in history. And that's for NASDAQ. Uh, take a look at the prior resistance level. We stabilized here on the hourly chart for a few days before we popped higher into the Friday into Friday's trading session. Uh, the trading progressing higher, like I've mentioned before, when we analyzed uh, the monthly chart, we still have uh, room to progress higher all the way to 7,200 and change. 7,215 and 7,230 to 34 is the next target level. Let's take it down one more time frame and that is the daily chart as you could see here on the daily chart we had pretty strong uh, days of consolidation last week starting with tuesday wednesday thursday and then friday we decided to break out and revisit monday's highs uh into the 7160 zone now keep in mind look at the left hand side we're also trading into a bit of resistance from this prior high now why did I say a bit of resistance? Well, because any coil around, and especially around the 200 simple moving average with no actual signs of a steeper pullback may project the price higher. So even though we are, on, uh, we are at resistance, this coil here, this range that is strate strategically built into this 200 SMA may provide more juice to this chart therefore we could see a continuation higher into the 7260 so keep in mind there are three large target levels and resistance levels as we're going to go into next week the first level that we need to be aware of is obviously the 7200 between 7200 and 7213 uh and then uh the next resistance area is into the 72 30 to 34 and then we're going we have another progression higher that may accelerate price into this high of 7260 zone uh and this is for nasdaq like i said and i'm gonna take it down to the hourly chart for some immediate um uh, immediate price action activity for those of you that may think to trade in the overnight trading session we had some uh, trade ideas and i had some trade ideas that i have released last week into our recording and we had a lot of traders that took advantage of uh, of those uh, uh ideas and actually they reached the targets very quickly into monday so before monday uh hit the new york trading session their targets were uh, already achieved from this from this video that we released last week 
All right, so as you can see here, the hourly chart, and this is for the immediate day trader. These are day trading ideas. The one that I'm referring to are directional bias ideas for the whole entire week. We do have resistance into this high here, into the 7160. We also have a high uh, from a few days ago into the 7168, and this was from last Monday. So this is the trade idea that we have posted into last week, a break over 7100. Uh, uh, we saw a push higher all the way into the 7150 zone. So it ran into the 7168, 7150 was our target. Uh, it was right on. All right, so the more we consolidate at the 7160 zone, so we can expect a breakout. Now, if you're looking for pullback zones, pullback that may become viable are into the 7134. So any price correction into the 7134 or even into the 7120 uh, may actually represent another leg in opportunity for a, uh, for a continuation higher back into these prior highs and like i said look for ne the next target level because we do have a considerable trader tradable void for the day trader for from 7160 all the way into the 7200 so these are immediate price action ideas even shallow uh shallow pullbacks into the 7150 or if we're getting a steeper pullback back into the 7120 so all this area here is going to be considered into the 7100 as a pullback buy opportunity for the day trader shorting is not going to be an option uh at least until we have uh until we see a break of seven seven thousand so every pullback buy into the seven thousand area is going to be considered uh is going to be considered a pullback buy and uh again i'm gonna move here to the daily chart uh, like I said before, we're riding on the 10 exponential moving average where we are into a definite super power trend. So we're riding the power trend. We see the moving averages that are starting to fan out. And finally, the price closing and staying above, well above the 200 simple, uh, the 200 simple moving average is a sign of strength as, as well. So we have seen a lot of buying into resistance that have worked in the last two months. And this is a result of the power trend that we're in. All right, let's continue with the Imini Dow. And I'm also going to start with the monthly chart. And that is uh, that is because we have just started a monthly, uh, a brand new monthly bar on Friday. So the next resistance area uh, into, oops, let me just, I forgot to link this. All right, uh, this is the Imini Dow. All right, so now the new resistance area is all the way into the 300 level. So we're still trading into the 26,000 zone. We have consolidated at that level. We're digesting the level. The fact that we're not getting any kind of pullback, this is a sign of strength. Now on Friday, the E-mini Dow had a little bit of uh, relative weakness because uh, we had a really nice run into Russell. Russell continued to be the power trender, uh, the, the power trending index and one of the strongest indices. Uh, and uh, f that was followed by NASDAQ and the Mini S&P. Uh, well, right behind these indices came the Imini Dow, but the Imini Dow was a little bit timid in in, in its uh, trajectory, uh, trajectory higher, uh, but definitely on the right track. Uh, so the next resistance area for uh, resistance area for the Imini Dow for this following week is going to be into the twenty six two hundred to twenty six uh, twenty six uh, 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 two fifty zone. Uh, we're trading right now at 26050, so we have a considerable tradable void that we could fill in the short time, uh, in, into the short time period within this week. All right, so when we're looking at the weekly chart, we can see the price that is trading exactly into resistance. We cannot ignore the fact that we have a little doji here formation onto the weekly chart. Well, this doji here is going to be interpreted as follows. Remember, weekly chart, doji, the price is trading into resistance, so it only makes sense to discuss a little bit of the downside right now. Why? Well, because we do have some air between the uh, between the 10 exponential moving average and where the price is trading right now, and we pretty much closed in a limbo, right? So we're we were the relative weak, uh, let's say, uh, index because we haven't made any new highs. 
we had NASDAQ and we had uh, Russell that made new highs on the day, while uh, the m and S&P and the m and Dow have not. So m and Dow actually uh, was one of the weakest indices. So I'm not going to rule out a possible correction. Um, uh, 25880 is going to be the area that I'm going to look for this week in case we're going to get um, a correction lower. So below this area, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be uh, looking for a possible short for a fill uh, into the 25500 zone. So that would be a, 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 that would be a tradable void for about 500 points pull back onto the Imini Dow from the weekly perspective. Obviously, if we're going to consolidate between last week's low, the 25880 zone, which was pretty much the 900 zone, it was uh, uh, it was literally levitating around that 900 zone. It was just hovering over that 900 zone and was pulling, uh, pushing back up, coming back down to revisit the 900 zone, breaching it by a little bit, and then rotating back higher. So it was a balancing act into the 900 zone. So 900, uh, 900 area really, really helps. So now because we have a doji on a continuation higher and over next week's high, which would be a digestion, digestion of this prior high of November, may create more buying pressure that can actually lead uh, to a continuation higher back into these prior two highs into the 26,690, 26,700. All right, let's take it one step down to the daily chart. As you can see right here, we're riding again the 10 EMA train. The moving averages are fanning out. We have a confluence zone here into the 25, uh, one. Uh, 23 that was never retested we're far away from a retest into uh, the 10 exponential moving average and we're trading well above the 200 SMA so you you saw that uh, Nasdaq when we discussed Nasdaq Nasdaq was just coiling at that 200 SMA well uh, the m and Dow actually had that propel higher at the pullback buy area here onto the confluence zone on the 25,000 before continuing higher. So I think this is what uh, NASDAQ is trying to do right now is actually trying to catch up and actually push through that 200 SMA. Uh, from the daily perspective, we had a daily reversal here. We pretty much had a run up into last week and then we had uh, uh, I would say a shallow pullback back into this 10 exponential moving average without uh, erasing any of the gains that were accumulated basically last week it was pretty uh, uh, a pretty substantial uh, pretty substantial price action uh, that has had developed into this area so it maintained that 25900 zone and as you can see it was fighting uh, the prior resistance from December and also this prior high uh, this is the Monday candle on the 25th just trying to erase this prior candle high so at this point the way I see it is just the dig digestion area uh, from this prior high and this high right here, so from November and uh, from from November and December highs, if we erase these highs uh, with price action, if we trade above the 250 to 300, the next target area is going to be into the 500, and then back room, uh, we have a considerable room back into this prior prior high of 26. 999 so that's the 27k right there that we're going to see so again the progression is going to be higher in that for that matter all right from from the hourly perspective just going to put the hourly here just for a brief moment you could see that i do have an alert here into the 900 zone because every pullback into the uh 25 uh 25 900 is seen viable now as we progress higher, I would like to see these highs erase. So as of right now, I'm not going to take any action in the Dow. Uh, pullback area into the 900 again can be viable with a stop perhaps into uh, the 850 zone. And uh, and again, as long as it's trading into the 25880 or 25900, pullback buys may be, uh, may be uh, bought into this area. Uh, although I would really like to see the price trade above the 200 SMA because it has been uh, catching some air, 
uh, between this week on Monday between price and the 200 SMA and into the core of this uh, range uh, into the 880. So I like the fact that it's basing higher. So uh, basically, I don't really want to see the price trigger into the 900 and lower than 900, even though that may be a, an aggressive buy. But I would like it to levitate above this 950 zone, above this 200 SMA in order to propel higher. So any pullback, shallower pullback back into the 80s uh, may push the price, uh, may put, push the price a little bit higher. So as of right now, there are no trading ideas into the m &E Dow going into the overnight trading session. Definitely. We need to see a little bit more price action and see where the price is going in order to set up. So right now, nothing is setting up uh, to say. All right, let's move on to the m and &E S&P. And the m and S&P, brand new candle. You can see that it's trying to uh, break above these highs into the uh, 2820. A big area this week was that uh, 27, uh, 2780 area. The 27 area uh, area was the digestion of these prior highs back in October, uh, back in November and December, and was the common denominator, uh, common denominator for. Uh, price as well into um, into uh, in, into October uh, when we have that dip because we were expecting a pullback buy into the uh, into the uh, 2780 that didn't happen and we pulled further into the 20 SMA rotation shallow rotation and then we know what happened so right now we're trading into resistance we need to pop over 2822 in order to start progressing higher the next target level is going to be into the 2880 so it is 100 points from that 28 2780 uh support zone uh let's move one time frame back to the weekly charts weekly chart very strong you can see the bottoming tail right here in fact trading into a continuation a uh, 10th uh it has been up for 10 weeks so it's the 10th week that has been high challenging this prior resistance and we have seen that we have uh, run over these resistance areas like nothing so we're going to see if we're going to get a coil at this level into the 2820 in order to start progressing higher back into the 2878 i'm not going to be thinking short not unless we break below that 2780 and for me, we need to uh, we need to test the twenty seven seventeen in order to start being bearish at this chart uh, in this current environment at this chart pattern. The way I see it onto the daily chart, you could see the two hundred SMA at twenty seven fifty. We got the lift and the price and the ten exponential moving average caught the price and it's actually really nice combing the price and uh, forcing it higher. We got a really nice uh, daily rotation that happened into the twenty eight hundred on Friday that made the price propel higher. We still have not traded above Monday's high. Monday was incredible move to the upside. You could saw that it caught a little bit of air here. Uh, and uh, it pulled back very modestly into the 10 exponential moving average. So the institutional money is still interest to the upside. We don't see any interest to the short side just yet. We're confronted with uh, resistance level. We're confronted with the first area of resistance at the 2814 to 2815 level that is deriving from a prior pivot high from December 3rd and also from this prior pivot high from October. So uh, the more we stabilize and the more we range into the 2800 and above 2800 zone, we could possibly push higher. And again, the median area is going to be 2720. So if we push through the 2720, uh, we have a clean shot all the way to 2900, which is really impressive. So pullback buys are going to be on the menu for next week. As far as the hourly uh, hourly chart is concerned, uh, you need a pullback into 2800 in order to start uh, uh, to start seeing some sort of pullbacks, uh, some sort of setups. So right now we're very extended on the hourly chart. We have one, two, three, four, five. I'm just looking at my other uh, my other monitor right now. Uh, there's no use bringing it here because we we are extended. Like I said, we are five bars up, five continuous hours up into the hourly chart. So you definitely need to see a pullback at least into the 2800 in order to start uh, to start uh, a trade in the S&P long, RTY.
overachiever. We're going to be moving to the monthly chart. You can see it right here, trading above the 200 simple moving average. Has not yet triggered a continuation onto the monthly chart like uh, the Dow or the S&P or even NASDAQ. However, still stabilizing into this minor support, uh, minor resist. I'm sorry, resistance, now minor support level for price into the 1570 above 1570. If we break below 1570, I set an alert here, I can start looking for short term bearish, but that is only for short term bearish because of the uh, 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 the phenomenal move that we had, uh, the extension that we had from, no, from uh, December 26th all the way to current price action into the 1590 or the highs, even in uh, NASDAQ or the S&P and YM, we can only expect shallow pullbacks that are going to be bought. So I don't think the market structure is going to change that much. We had an impressive rally, and I think that shallow pullbacks were, were are definitely going to make sense. Uh, I actually can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm rooting for a pullback so we could actually see some more uh, some more swings. Uh, develop because we're trading at the highs. Day trading is going to be in play. No swing trades uh, for the indices as as far as uh, uh, as far as this week goes. So um, definitely, we're going to be waiting for the swing portion for pullback. Uh, so uh, we can buy shorter term. Like I said, a very short, uh, very short. I, I I wouldn't even go for a swing short, but I would definitely go for uh, day trades or trend uh, day trades short. Uh, at this point, if we're going to get some rotations above the 1570. All right, let's move on to the daily, uh, to the weekly chart. I'm sorry. Here we go. Daily and one more. Let me put it here on the weekly. All right, here's the weekly chart. The weekly chart progressing higher. Again, the 10th week uh, that we are closing above the prior highs. And uh, so far, we're actually, we have actually uh, exited the turbulence zone. Turbulence zone being uh, resistance from prior price action, including uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic resistance levels that actually are generated, th this dynamic resistance bands that are generated from uh, these moving averages. And uh, as you can see here, we can uh, actually, if we tap and stay above the 1600, we can actually see a progression higher. So don't forget that on Friday, we hit a high of 1603.6, which is very impressive because this is going to, the, the fact that we have peaked here, again, it means that we're chewing up this resistance to the left-hand side into the 15. Uh, 15 and 20 zone. Uh, again, if we're going to be trading this week above this high, this will assure a continuation higher for price. Look for profit target areas into the 16.15 and 16.20. If we rotate lower, this is going to be the line in the sand, the 15.70. Look for a fill all the way into the 15.27 level, and that is in Russell. All right, let's go to the daily chart right now. And the daily chart, as you can see, has been <coughs> excuse me, has been consolidating at the 10 exponential moving average. We have the 200 simple moving average right here into the 16, um, uh, into the 1599 to 1600. Uh, and what we can see here is that. Um, is that we we still have a little bit of challenge here into this high that it, that I mentioned and that we hit a high last week of 1603 uh 1603.6 so we still need to digest that but the way I see it this is pretty much a bull flag that it is ready to explode higher so if we take out the 16 uh 1603 1604 uh, guess what? Watch out. The next target level is going to be way higher uh, from, uh, for the daily chart, 1650 or so. So uh, from the hourly perspective, immediate price action activity, pullback buys uh, into the 1580 to 1585 may represent buying opportunities. Remember, I'm going to be only short only if we break below 1570. That's my line in the sand. 
All right, let's move on to bonds. And bonds have actually sold off this week. They have been ranging for a very long period of time throughout this year. Uh, this was the low that was uh, created on January 18th. These are the highs uh, into the 147. We were never able to break these highs into the 147 and progress higher. And uh, I think that the more we continue here, definitely now we're into minor resistance from this prior pivot high, uh, minor support, I'm sorry, and we're into minor support from this prior pivot high. But the more we stabilize here, I think that it would all be made it would only make sense to pull back into the 142.28, which is the prior pivot low and also coinciding with this 200 simple moving average. From the daily perspective, if this week uh, we are going to trade above 144.18, we can see probably a progression higher. I'm not going to be very enthusiastic on it, but probably into the 145 or so. Uh, for me, this was a much steeper reaction from the weekly chart because the weekly chart we had a doji last week. Now, keep in mind, this is a, uh, you see this candle right here is a doji. Now, remember that we have a similar doji, not the, not the chart structure, but I'm talking about the candlestick onto the, uh, onto YM. So that's going to be, again, um, uh, a caution zone. Uh, once we break below, uh, we broke below this uh, two day consolidation into the 145, we came in exactly into the 140. Uh, we're very close to tr to the 143 level. 143 may actually be an area to look for uh, uh, for a possible rotation and a continuation higher. As of right now, the more uh, and when the price is going to open and if the price is going to break below this weekly low, I can only see a continuation lower perhaps into the one. Uh, 142 and if we get into the 142 I mean watch out below because I think that we're going to be progressing higher from this perspective uh, a couple of weeks ago I was looking at a possible continuation higher over 147 why well because this was setting up as an inverse head and shoulder uh, as you can see here we have resistance and this was uh, this was actually the neckline and this was the right shoulder left shoulder right here this being the head so we were we're looking for a continuation higher back into at least into the 150. Things rolled over. The pattern did not trigger any kind of reversal. So therefore, uh, we're going to be having it on watch. It's going to be the neutral watch. So this is just going to be on watch. I'm not very excited about bonds and I don't think that I'm going to take any action in bonds. Just want to bring the monthly chart very quickly here. We have the same doji onto the weekly. And uh, as you can see here, Last week, we we try to stay above this 10 exponential into the 144 for the longest time, but then uh, we started to move a little bit lower. And in fact, on Friday, we had a solid, I'm just going to break very quickly here, the one hour chart. We had a solid sell. Uh, as you can see right here, it is uh, uh, trending. We have uh, the price uh, trading below all the moving averages. So we're finally shifting into uh, a directional uh, bias for lower and these were the bonds all right let's continue with natural gas we are actively in a uh, natural gas trade i'm gonna start with the monthly chart uh, monthly chart is actually looking very good it's looking a little bit better than other uh than other uh charts i would say and at other times natural gas did so we had a we have a really nice bottoming tail candle uh, uh with the high and this is for last month and this is the month of february the high is 2.851 and we actually triggered a reversal off of this and we closed a little bit above the uh, the 50 simple moving average and also we traded above this prior candle high. So remember, this is a swing uh, slash core trade. I'm looking for um, uh, to stay in this trade for a longer period of time. Obviously, I'm looking for higher uh, price targets, at least into the 350 to 370. So you have to have a lot of patience uh, when you're trading this and you definitely, uh, I personally trade it on higher time frames, weekly charts, daily charts, monthly charts, etc. We still have bands of resistance into the $3. One of my targets is into the $3 and I legged in uh, this, uh, uh, I legged in natural gas earlier into the uh, 2.57 and 2.58. These are my, con my, my positions here. All right, so um, moving forward, I'm still looking for a progression higher into the $3. 
the weekly chart. Let me bring it up to date right here. All right, so we closed above the 200 simple moving average. The last time we closed above the 200 simple moving average was all the way back in September. So this is a huge improvement for chart structure. All right, let's move to the daily chart. Daily chart still has a little bit of resistance here from this prior low. So this is minor resistance moving forward if we break above these highs. Uh, if we see a print of 289, uh, then we can uh, we'll definitely look a bit more positive for a continuation higher into the 298 or so. So it's looking very, very positive for a progression higher. But definitely natural gas is a little bit on the whip, whippier side. All right, let's take a look at copper. And uh, we're going to start copper with the monthly chart. And the monthly chart had a really longest, longest range here. And as you can see, a little bit of symmetry of what happened in 2016 here. Uh, throughout two, 2016, it has been consolidated almost for the whole entire year. In the November, we had the pop. So when it comes to commodities, and especially if you're swing trading or core trading commodities, you definitely have to give them a lot of time. I definitely like, when, when I trade commodities, I definitely like to focus on major time frames. And they're setting up, uh, they're, you don't see setups that are occurring every month or every quarter. You possibly can have a setup that, in this case here, back in 2000, at the end of 2016, you could see here that it waited a whole entire year for the pop into resistance. Uh, and then you had to wait for the setup again. And it, if you can see here, this is a monthly chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. You had to wait seven months for another move up. Here we had to wait one, two, three, four, five, six months for the breakout. Uh, 286 was the breakout back into the $3. This is the hiccup zone. Why? Because we have these prior lows that are pressing, that are creating resistance bands to current price action and uh, creating a little bit of resistance at this point. Well, actually creating a lot of resistance at this point. But the matter is that the way and if um, a copper is going to digest this area, we could actually see a push higher. How the digestion should be? Well, it should be a mini range on the one hour or even the daily. All right, let's move on to the daily right now. And let's see what we have going on. We have a little daily a sell going on, but we're trading right into the 10 exponential moving average. The 10 exponential moving average is into the 290 zone, and the next uh, minor support zone is into the 2.868 level. So any pullbacks into these levels, these are going to be pulled back by watches, okay? So I'm going to put it below, I'm going to put my alert below possible pullback buy into this area. Now remember, we still have 286 all the way to 290 area. So this is going to be uh, a quite a turbulent zone for the price. It's probably going to be the decision point moving forward. All right. And this is copper. Uh, let's move on to heating oil. And uh, heating oil has been a really nice consolidating onto the daily chart. Uh, support is one point. 9651 if we break above uh, uh 2.0480 this um, um the commodity may be starting to progress higher at least into a first target of 210 and again 210 is is a huge confluence zone so we need to stabilize at this level in order to start progressing a little bit higher uh let's take a look at our bob and uh our bob uh is uh, uh and the role, obviously, this is a gap. Uh, but what I want to start with is the weekly chart because the week, last week we had a really, really strong um, uh, R Bob. So these are the gasoline futures. And as you could see here, we pretty much have had a really strong close uh, into the 1.727. We actually made a high into the 1.77. So this is going to be on watch for a further continuation higher. I think that we may be starting to move a little bit higher in, uh, in gasoline. But definitely, this is a very white candle. And uh, the rotation came as a breakout over 5.2. We still need to... Uh, we it's not ready for a trade just yet. Um, perhaps smaller time frames are going to give us a bit more clues. 
as to where the price is going to progress. Still a little thin, uh, and uh, we have a new support level here. We're going to have to see how it handles this gap. So far, the gap 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 up support is at 1.7277. It moved a little bit lower here, so this is the new chop box that we're going to be referring to. If the price is going to trade above 1.773, we're going to see a progression higher. If the price is going to break below uh, 7128, we may see a pullback and possibly a fill into uh, fill into this gap zone, at least into the 165. All right, let's move on to oil. I've received a lot of emails in regards to crude and also in regards to gold. Is it time to get long or is it time to short? Okay, let's move on to the monthly chart right here. And this is crude monthly chart. You can see we had pretty nice uh, January and February and we're stalling right now. No surprise because we're running, we ran into uh, resistance at the $58 zone and we have a lot of... Um, resistance that is coming from the $60 zone and also from the 58 and those areas are radiating bands of resistance that are pushing the price a little bit lower now the way we handle oil at this price technically is actually going to uh, provide us with more clues of how the month of March is going to uh, pan out. As you can see, $58 also comes at resistance from this prior pivot low from October. And this is no surprise right here. And this is from 07. So 2007 radiating support back in 2019 here. We also have this prior pivot, uh, prior pivot high. And this cell formed this resistance for current price action so this is the area from which it broke down in 2015 from when we where we made a new low of 26 26 dollars right here back in december 2016. so this is a very uh uh, uh i would say heavy weight uh resistance area right here because things may progress in either direction all right so let's move on to the weekly chart and see what we have going on on this weekly perspective we have a confluence zone into the 5450 5450 if we hold the 5450 uh and we do have some resistance into the 5550 so it's going to have a dollar range uh the more we handle this area the more we can see a rotation that's going to happen higher now i'm going to zoom out on this chart so you can see what i'm seeing right now so this is a cell that is coming into a confluence zone we have a prior pivot high here into the 54 50 zone so this is the area that i'm referring to huge confluence zone this is support right here the more this area is going to radiate support price may have a chance for a rotation is it ready for a continuation higher not really so we still have a red candle in uh, red candle for all last week's activity let's take a look at the daily chart daily chart um here it is let me just pull it a little bit all right here it is uh so i think that we're developing a range i was looking for my marker okay we're developing a range which is 55 bucks all the way to 50 58 dollars let's see how 55 dollars is going to react because if we get a pullback into 55 55 may be a buy area with a tight stop of about 30 cents and we can look for a rotation higher back into this prior high into the 57.80 all right let's move on to crude and this is the last chart that we're going to be uh reviewing today uh and i'm going to start this with a monthly chart okay monthly chart rotating lower so we had uh we had the month of february that actually pinched higher back into this resistance we had a swing long we captured about 24 points in it it reached into the 13 and had a high of 1349.8 uh, so it got into that 1350 zone resistance it still had a little bit of void into the 60s but it didn't quite make made it there so we have this pullback i'm going to be watching the 1280 zone if 1280 zone is going to hold i think we can leg in with possible stop into the uh 1270 and we can have a rotation higher as of right now it's not getting ready the way it is positioned the more we're going to be trading it's going to land into this heavy turbulence zone here into the 1280 zone so we don't have a lot of tradable voids to the downside we had price velocity that pushed uh the dynamics of price lower throughout friday overnight trading session and new york trading session that actually accelerated the price so uh lower 
Uh, but again, we're approaching the area where the price may hit the brakes and start digesting or even rotating at this point. Or if not, we may be continuing lower. So the monthly chart right now, to me, suggests that, yeah, we're triggering a short here because we're having a, a reversal off of the weekly. But at the same time, we have a lot of resist, a lot of support into the 80s zone that are suggesting more buying pressure. All right, let's move on to the weekly chart. The weekly chart last week was a heavy, uh, heavy week of selling that actually accelerated through Thursday and Friday. These are the two massive days that produced this big wide range, wide range bar. Now, 1300 is still going to be the line in the sand. If we get a rotation over 1300, this is going to be impressive because this is going to create a buy zone. So we're going to be watching the one hour, four hour and daily charts for more clues. All right, this is the weekly chart that came into the 10 exponential moving average. Like I was saying, the daily chart just revisiting the 10, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the 20, the 50, <laughs> the 50 simple moving average, this green line right here, uh, the 50 simple moving average into the 1300, which is also coinciding with these prior highs, which is creating a shelf of support right here. This was the price dynamic that pushed the price lower back into this chop box because you could see this chop box right here is all the way from 1274 into the 1300. So this was the wide range. This was pretty much the, uh, the bull flag uh, that propelled the price higher going into uh, going into uh, going into January. All right. So uh, and again, we had a pullback buy here, and then we had a steeper uh, correction back. We we've actually ignored the, this first uh, this first support level, and we're landing back into the secondary support level. So once again, like I've mentioned from the weekly chart, these are the support zones from the daily and from the weekly coming into the 1280 zone. So this is going to be uh, the deceleration mode for gold. We're gonna have to wait and see what the price is gonna do, but definitely this is a, a first area of support. 1300, 1390, and uh, 1300, 1290, and 1280. These are the support bands. And as we're moving into the 1290, into the 1280, we may see a deceleration in price and the price trying to stabilize. I would like to see something that would be more constructive, not only on the one hour chart. One hour chart is getting ready for a rotation. Don't forget that here we had one, two, three, four, five, six continuous hours of selling. And this came from a range breakdown into uh, into Friday morning and continuation lower right here. So what I would like to see for more confirmation is, uh, is actually a break above 1300. And I'm going to place a an alert here just a tad lower so it gives me a heads up all right gives me a heads up on the possible rotation into the uh into this prior high so now i'm gonna place one here as well right into this high so i have two alerts here that are gonna get me ready for next week we trade above 13 1301 uh we can look for further targets and this is a quick actionable trading idea uh, we may look for targets into the 1308 to 1312 zone and this is to start the sunday off thanks so much for tuning in and having the patience to watch this video it was a little longer than usual and that's because we had a lot of things to talk about for this brand new week of trading because we just have brand new monthly charts uh, we have uh, a lot of webinars, free webinars that we're hosting this week. Feel free to uh, visit our website and get on our email list. You're going to have a pop-up screen uh, if you uh, tap onto uh, tradeoutloud.com and uh, put your email in there. You're going to be notified of uh, a lot of uh, free uh, webinars that we're hosting. We're hosting webinars once or two, two times a week. Also, if you're interested in, to, in our futures day trading class, or even into the swing trading class. If you have a full-time job, you think that day trading is not for you, but swing trading is more suited for you. Uh, you we have the day trading class that starts on March 25th, and we have uh, the swing trading class that starts on April 1st. If you're interested in either of those classes, you can visit our website or you can email us, and we can provide you with uh, more information about the class, the class curriculum, 
uh, tuition cost, etc. If you're interested in uh, joining our trading room, you can uh, uh, log into our uh, website. It is tradeoutloud.com and uh, visit the trading room tab or tradeoutloud.com for a slash live trading room. We day trade uh, futures uh, and uh, we swing trade futures and stocks. So if you're interested on that, visit the website. And don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This way you're going to receive a notification each time we post uh, uh, market analysis. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the Sunday uh, and I'll see you next week. Have a fantastic trading week ahead.